Hey friends, it's Gina. Welcome to the Rebookery channel. Today I am so excited for this journal spread that I'm going to do. Um, I've been mulling over it in my brain for the last couple of days and I have an idea of what I want this to look like. Um, and so we'll see if I can actually make the final product look like what's in my head. So I want to journal about or make a spread about um, some owls that hang out in my neighborhood and get up on our street lights. But I don't want to do a scrapbooky type layout. This is going to go in my garden journal, which I will link below um, to my garden journal video, how I've set it up. I don't have any pictures of these owls. I just have memories of these owls and I just have the, you know, the comfort of knowing that they're always going to be there up on my street lights. So that page right there that you just saw was my journal spread that I did on Mr. Slithers. And I'll link that below too. This paper um, is a book page from a science book. And so on the one side was the snake for Mr. Slithers, and then on the other side were these owls. And that's the picture that I'm going to use, even though it's not my own photograph, it's the illustration from this book. That's the photo, or that's the illustration I'm gonna use for this journal spread. So now I'm just taking a, like a book jacket from a vintage cookbook, and I'm gonna cut out a circle because I'm gonna make a moon. I am obsessed with moons and I love adding moons to my journals. I, I do that a lot in my art journals. I think I have one art journal just about moons and I love creating moons. I could go out and photograph them but my photo my photography skills are not the best so I was like making my version of what I think the moon looks like and so I have several journal journal spreads of where I've made um, the moon. So this one um, is just the the page from the book and then I added some texture with some masking tape and now I'm just adding some paint and then the paint I'm adding right here is like a really thick uh, it's grainy it's got like um, sand type of crystals in it and then I'm also using some of the leftover paint from the background wash that I had put on those book pages. So there, I'm adding some blue to kind of show some shadowing and stuff in the moon. And then this is some strand tape and it's um, got like strands of fiber that runs through it and it's white. So I like to use this because, I don't know, it's just kind of an interesting tape, but it also adds a lot of texture. So I'm just gluing that or taping that down onto my my moon here and then you'll see I kind of go back and add I, I decide I want to cut oh that's what I did sorry I decided that I was going to cut the edges off and then thought no I kind of liked how that little piece was hanging off so now I'm going to add some fluorescent paint to give it a little bit of highlight and I'm going to pull out some here in just a second I'm going to pull out some pink paint because I want to kind of put a little bit of um, a rose color on this moon. But as soon as I put it on there, I decided I really don't like it. That wasn't the pink I was looking for. So I go back in with the yellow and kind of cover it up. And in the end, I'm okay with what it looks like because, you know, it's just about the process and it's just about what my interpretation of the moon is. So I took this over to my sewing machine and I just messy stitched around the edges and left the threads. And now I'm ready to put this on my book pages, if I could get my book page going the right direction. So just add a lot of glue, because this is a super thick moon with a lot of layers on it. And I want it to balance out the owls that are on the other side. So I kind of move it down just a little bit. And then those strings, I like them hanging off, but they kind of get in the way as I'm um, doing my journaling. So these are some paper papers left over from part one, um, which is actually the journal process I did on Mr. Slithers. And like I said, I'll link that below. 
but it turns out that I was able to use those papers that I pulled for that journal spread. I was actually able to use them in this journal spread and it kind of became this cool little game to see if I could use only these pieces of paper and make it work. And I actually did really well at, at that. I, um, I don't think I pulled any other papers. I might have, I'm not for sure. So this is um, the book jacket from the Mr. Slithers a journal page called the ABCs of nature and I'm cutting the moth out of it because that moth is just screaming to be used on this journal spread and then I'm going to use the leftover paper from that moth um, and make some clouds because I think my moon needs some clouds. I need some darker blue, some contrast. So I'm just going to cut out the clouds from this little scrap of paper. And I end up and use all of this paper. I think there's just a few little scraps left that I'm that were too small for me to even cut. So I love that when that happens. And, and then I've used something to the fullest. So I didn't talk about it, but in the right hand corner, I had cut a square of some old, old music uh, paper in the Music was called Out of the Forest. So I cut that square because I want it to actually represent my house. So I love um, making like moonscapes where I have the moon and then I also have my house. And so that's, the, that's what that square is there for. So this piece of paper here is a book jacket from an old Bambi book and I'd pulled it to use in that previous spread and I couldn't find a place for it. But I thought it would be great just to cut out the pictures of the animals and stick them down in one of the corners. And so that's what I end up and do. Now the piece I have now, this is really cool. So this was a photograph from my original um, picture of Mr. Slithers, which is a snake, and this is the grass, and I didn't need all of that in that other spread. So I kept that, and I was going to throw it in the trash, and then as I was starting to put it in the trash, I was like, wait a second, I can cut that up and use it as grass in this next spread. So that's exactly what I did. I just cut some jagged little pieces, and I'll line the bottom with those, um, those little scraps of the photo. So now I have a little bird. There's like a bird stamp that came off some mail the other day, and I'm going to stick that on there. But what I need is a roof for my house. So I go to my collage book and just happen to have some triangles of some vintage wallpaper scraps, and it fit perfect. And I even used the tape that I had taped it into the booklet with, and I don't know, that I didn't even plan that out. It worked out perfect and I, I love the way it looked and I love um, how easy it was. So I did pull that piece of paper, but everything else is paper that I had from my journaling session the other day. So now I'm just gonna glue down these pieces because I like where they're at. And so I'm just using a glue stick and figuring out my placement. And so this spread is going to go in my guest section of my garden journal. And this is a section where I'm just going to document all the different critters and creatures that we have that live by our house or that come visit our house. Um, in my journaling video about the garden journal, I told you guys that we kind of live in the country and so we have quite a few critters and we have a pond in our backyard so we have quite a few critters and it's kind of cool my kids got to grow up with these especially my youngest got to grow up with these critters being in our yard and and being able to hear them and see them throughout the day so I thought this would just be an awesome way to document one of my favorites, which is the owls. And like I said, I never get pictures of the owls, but I do hear them hooting quite a bit. And this is kind of gross, but when I go for walks, I will see the owl pellets um, on the ground underneath the street lights, um, which is, you know, it's their 
what they eat and then they get rid of it. And so um, as a science teacher, I've actually gotten owl pellets before and my kids have dissected them to see what the owls have been eating. But I don't dissect the ones I find on the street. I, I leave them be. So anyway, I got all that stuff glued down, trying to find a place for that little bird stamp. And I think he's just gonna go right there next to my house. I'm gonna add a little bit of washi tape to him just to kind of secure him down. So as I'm adding this little stamp here, I'm starting to look at the whole composition and I love it. I love the blue, I love the dark blue, the yellow, the moon, all that good stuff. But I feel like it's a little um, flat and one dimensional. And I have this piece of tissue that I'd pulled out the other day and I haven't used it yet. So I just decided to tear it up and just start gluing it down. And the cool thing about tissue paper is that it is um, translucent and so you know you can you can glue it down and some of the background will still peek through but it also gives just another little dimension so I'm very haphazard here and just kind of gluing it down wherever I feel like I need a little bit of interest and I've used Mod Podge with tissue paper before um, I've also used wet glue with tissue paper before. And another cool thing about it is that if you glue both the bottom and the top, it becomes more and more transparent. And you'll almost, it's like it blends in more with the background if you put wet glue over uh, both the bottom and the top of it. But here I'm just putting glue on the bottom of it so um, it's not as transparent. It's, it's a little more like you can see it. It's a little more defined. So I just stick those little things down all over and I'm loving it. But now I'm going to go and add some of that. Um, it's like that glittery paint. It's um, kind of, like I said, it's, it's a very gritty paint. I think I got it at Michael's and it's just kind of got a little pearlescent uh, shimmer to it, and then it adds a little bit of texture. And I just am kind of going over the background and it just adds a little bit of highlight and a little bit of texture to the pages. And it kind of blends in everything so that my moon and my clouds and my house and my owls kind of all come into one layer. So that's just what I'm doing here. Okay, so time to get out my heat gun and just dry off the page. And now I wanna add some text, but I don't feel like I wanna write on this. So I'm gonna go back to that little vintage music sheet that I have. I'm gonna to try to cut out the words that they have and see if I can get it to work into this journal. And this is always like um, a puzzle. Can I make book text fit with what I'm trying to say? So, I'm looking at both sides, and like I said, this um, song was a children's song called Out in the Forest. So I pull out one of the pieces that says Out in the Forest. I find another piece that says A Band of Gypsies. And then there's another piece that says Come Along and Join Our. And then my final piece that goes on the left-hand side says Wide World. So that kind of all goes together. So I'm gonna glue all of those down. I love using text from books or music um, or just some, some piece of paper and trying to make it work in my journal entry. I, it, it's so cool because it really makes you think and you have to try to figure out how can these words convey the message I'm trying to get across. So now I'm gonna outline my house and give it a little more definition. And I find the scraps of that Bambi dust jacket and I'm gonna cut it apart and make a couple windows and then make a door. And I make the door out of a piece of wrapping paper and I don't care that my windows don't match up perfectly. I actually like it like that. I like that one of the windows is bigger than the other. It kind of adds a little quirkiness. And I also like that the roof of my house is kind of off center. Um, that adds a little quirkiness too. 
and um, I don't know. To, I just love, I just love this collaging with paper and turning it into um, a house. And especially since if you look at the bottom of the house, there's uh, four little kids. And so I thought that was kind of cool because that kind of represents my house. And I don't have four little kids, but um, that just kind of represents to me in my mind that represents my kids. So now I'm going to go over this again with my green pen just to add some definition and kind of make those um, attributes pop out a little bit more. And then I'm going to, let's see, what do I do next? Oh, I cut out a chimney, yeah, because you need a chimney on your house. So I go back to that wrapping paper, which was two-sided wrapping paper, and I cut out just a teeny tiny little chimney and stick it up there and then go over it with my pen. So now I'm ready to add some text over on this right-hand side, and I want it to be something from those owls. And in that music, there was a little piece of text that said, we're spreading gladness. And that seems to be perfect because every time I hear those owls, I, I feel very happy inside. So I'm just trying to figure out a place to put it and I'm gonna glue it down. And my glue is running out, so it's taking me forever to just to get a little drop of glue out. I need to replenish my supply. Now I'm gonna go over my text with a red pen just to kind of make it stand out a little bit. And I'm actually pretty happy with the way this turned out. So I'm ready to add this into my journal. But I need to create the section for my journal because I have the journal spreads, I just don't have my section created. And this is my section um, that I'm gonna title Guests. So I pull out an index card, and of course it doesn't say Guests, it says Vines. So I'm going to alter that and just put a little um, label sticker on there and title it Guests. And then I need to add a little bit of embellishment to this index. So I'm going to use some vintage uh, wallpaper. And this is like, I don't even think it's vintage. I think it's old. It's just old, old, old wallpaper. And it falls, I have a whole roll of it, but it is so brittle and it falls apart very easily. So I always have to use liquid glue on it and I just have to be very careful with it. But I need to find a couple of photographs that I'm gonna stick on this um, section card, this index card. So I pulled out a couple of photographs of some flowers and then I pulled a couple of photographs of just some guests that I had taken pictures of. Um, one, were, one was a picture of some ducks that we had a few years back on our pond, and they didn't last very long. And actually, I did a journal spread um, on these ducks, and it was so interesting because they started off, there was like five of them, and then the next day there was four of them, and then the next day there was three of them and two of them, and you kind of know where this ends. And it was, um, it was kind of sad because I would get off work and I would come home and look forward to sitting out on my deck and watching the ducks. And <laughs> every day I'd look at the ducks and there would be one less. Um, but we have a lot of snakes and we have a lot of turtles and muskrats that are in our pond. And so I think the ducks met an unfortunate um, end. So I used that uh, cookbook dust jacket again and just backed the photo with that. And then I created a little pocket. So now there's a pocket on this side so I can add a journaling tag. So I'm gonna go back to my wrapping paper, or I'm sorry, my wallpaper again. And it just happens that this piece fits perfectly on that back side. And I'm going to use some liquid glue and I'm gonna actually um, brush this on with a paintbrush because it is um, needing a lot of reinforcement. It is such a delicate piece of paper. So I'll just brush it on with my paintbrush and then stick it down onto this paper and it makes a nice background. And this uh, wallpaper is not um, really slick on the front. Sometimes they'll have a 
like a vinyl coating or something on the front and makes it hard to glue to. This wallpaper is not like that. So this is just a picture of a butterfly and I'm going to glue that or um, use my tape gun to put that down. But I want to incorporate the rest of that um, music, but I can't figure out how. So I need to somehow, because I want to make it all cohesive. So I decided I'm just going to put the music paper over top of the photo because I don't need all of the um, space in that photo because really the butterfly is just in the center and I don't need all the other stuff. So when I do that, the sticker that had been on that music from I don't know when, I mean it was like that way when I, I got it and it seems very old, it decides to come up. So I had to glue that down. And then I used the rest of that book jacket. Um, this was a little piece of text that says the New Dutch Cookbook. And I think the word book is not on there, but it does say the New Dutch Cook. So I put that on there and then added the rest of the music paper that I had. Okay, so now I'm ready to put all of this in my guest section. So close the binders. So here's my index card. I will stamp guests on that later. There's a blank page. There's my owl moon. There's Mr. Slithers and the turtles. And yeah, I'm loving how this turned out. Guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I totally appreciate all of your love. Um, let me know if you have any comments or questions. And I would really appreciate if you'd give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Guys, have a beautiful, beautiful day. And thank you again for spending time with me. Bye.